Hey, Endless Honeymoon Podcast listeners, if you love this show, the best way to support us is to buy some merch. We have a coffee mug, we have an amazing beach towel, and we have some very cute short shorts in many sizes. That's right. So if you want to get yours now and make your butt look like Natasha's butt, go to EndlessHoneymoonPod.com slash shop. Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. Woo! It's been a party around here. It is Dia de los Muertos. Muertes? Muertos. Muertos. And Natasha and I engaged in the annual ritual of white cultural appropriation, putting on eyeliner and taking our child to a (laughs) cemetery to... That was quite a fest. That was quite an affair today. She seemed to like it. It was awesome. But you know what happens? You have a kid. There's a crowd. I'm like, and she's not in a stroller or anything. And so it's just like, so it's really takes away. I'm, I'm just saying my experience is mm. completely different. It's mm-hmm. not chill. It's like, mm-hmm. I'd say 90% of my energy is making sure that I have my eyes on my child. Well, I had a good time and the child had a good time. She so did. I guess two out of three ain't bad. No, I know. I know. Old, and it was uh, fun. Old, uh, every, every silver lining has a gray cloud over here. No, it it was very fun. I loved the music. It was awesome. And you know, it made me realize... The the, um, taquitos were good. Taquitos were good. Made me realize how lonely it must be. Because I was watching these like Aztec Mexican dudes, you know, dressed in Aztec uh, uh, feather uh, headdresses and these women dressed in like old school Aztec uh, ritual dance they were doing. And then there was these like, you know, classic... The Dia de los Muertos, like Mexican dresses and half makeup. And I was just like, I mean, look, Judaism does not compare to that. But I am so grateful to be from a uh, an ethnicity that has ritual and tradition. Because I was just thinking watching that, like how lonesome it must be to be like a, a just a, a mutt of Protestantism where like all of the rituals from the old country have been kind of like slowly forgotten by they your have family. New rituals probably. Like, like what? Like East, Halloween? Easter I, brunch. <laughs> <laughs> Easter brunch. Watching Joel Olstein. Midnight mass. Well, mid Catholics have ritual. That's the thing. Catholics are like that old school flavor. Oh, I see. And I, Italians I only know got Catholic. it. And P, if you're if you're in touch with your Italian, Italians don't have anything like El Dia de los, de los Muertos. Sure, but it's something. All I'm saying is to have nothing, to have no ritual in your life, to have no um, old country vibes in your life must just be like, just you're just. That's what you know. What it is. I, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but that's why hippies are so powerful. Hippies are white. Uh, they're, they're white homegrown rituals. It's like... That's why I want to have a solstice festival at Christmas. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like hippies are for uh, our American like homegrown, let's restart and do rituals. That's what I here. want. I guess I'm a hippie. I guess you are, my dear. You've always dressed like one and now you <laughs> finally realize. Um, it was pretty cool though. And uh, and I, I the other thing I really liked about De, De Los Muertos is this idea of... Uh, an annual remembrance of your dead. There was this AA speaker I once heard who's lost their child. Uh, their child died young. Uh, and they, I mean, that's a terrible thing. And they, it was a very powerful story. He was speaking. He said, every time they uh, make a reservation at a restaurant, they'll make the reservation in their, their child's name. And it's a little grim, I guess. But I pre- didn't, I do not like that. Well, to me, well, the way he, the way this person told it, and I thought it was really beautiful, is he was like, you know, what we don't want to do with the memory of our child is uh, just let it fade away and try and forget. And so we we keep, we do that so that we're always saying his name, keeping his name alive. Instead, they want to be like, you know, at Applebee's and have uh, your dead son <laughs> party of three. Your table's ready. Well, there was a short story. A bit I, morbid. I don't know. I thought it was kind of... I hear what you're but saying. But I like Dio de los Muertos. It's nice. They got their friend does. They put up the pictures. And you, you know what I like? Them. I like being in an atmosphere where every single person is in a costume. Yeah, well, that's cool too, for sure. Everyone's and, done something. Even our kid, even us. And You I, know, everyone has makeup on. Everyone is like... Well, there's a short story I once r- read that was said that basically that you die twice. It was about these people that were like in this... Uh, this uh, limbo and said so these people die twice once when you actually die and once when no one speaks your name ever again when everybody mm. forgets you everybody that knew you forgot you and so the ofrenda is kind of cool because that will never happen in a mexican family yeah let's keep talking oh although I sh- let, let, let's let's well hold on before we do that i just have one last thing before we introduce our guest uh 
I had a crazy idea today at Dia de los Muertos. Okay? You ready for this? I think I'm going to write an animated feature about the whole Dia de los Muertos <laughs> world. Where like a little boy. You should sell it to Pixar. I mean, I would love that. if Do you know someone there? No, but um, I think I really think they would, they need something like that. This is awesome. Yes. Do you know anybody? You don't. You. I do know the head of Pixar. Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. Unbelievable. I'm gonna call it. I don't know what I'll call it, but we'll figure it out. Uh, oh, our our, our uh, you should call it maybe. Um, par- Dead son party of one. <laughs> That's it. We got the name. Um, what were you thinking? Coco. I was gonna call it Coco. Oh, Coco would be a good name for the t- for the titular character. Or no. Not the titular character. What if the Coco was actually the grandma of the titi? Okay, let's. All I, right. I have another look. thing I want to talk about with El Dio de los Muertos, but let's call our guests because we have kids the same age, and I want to ask him about it. This is a good idea. Uh, this dude, the funniest dude. I mean, the funny. What can you say? What can you say? Other than let's welcome him in. Okay, this is a. Uh, he was a writer on another period. Sure, he was. Follow him on I follow him on Instagram. He's hilarious. One of the funniest men in America. It's Gil Ozeri, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Gil, what's up? Oh, you're a sailor. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. I just came off the Steve Zizu train. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, can we hear him okay, Laura? Sounds good. Can He's got one, of the, got one of those funky filters. Oh, I have one of my headphones off. That's why. <laughs> yeah. Gil, how are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing all right. Oh I'm no! In there, baby. Oh no! no that's, that that was good for me. Oh, that's Fuck. good. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? Oh, we're just fine. We went to um, the Dia de los Muertos festival today at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Oh, nice. How was that? It was good. We we have some pretty good news. Natasha and I were. We talked to some people, and we're um, we're Mexican now. <laughs> Oh, okay. Is that how it works? Well, it, it did today. These guys were really cool. They charged us, t- like, not that. It was kind of reasonable. It was like 5000 a person. And okay. we're not white anymore. Oh, wow. It was just $5,000. I, I, I have some bad news for you guys. That's not how you become Mexican. What? I don't even think you can. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> you you got to. I think you got to move there. You have to move to <laughs> Mexico to become Mexican. That's uh-huh. how it works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think someone just stole your money. Hold on, the guy gave me his number. I'm sure it's a. I'll call him. He he's he was very. Wait, cool. Gil, I want to ask you a question because we went to this yes. place tonight and they gave us these little bags from for our kid because we have daughters kind of similar age. And then they put these marigold like flower petals in this little pouch and they made us write people who died. And then the woman told our kid that well, they didn't make us. They suggested it. She said, <laughs> "Now the spirit is going to come back because they're going to smell the marigolds. You just have to go home." And put this on an altar so then we come home we have i have a little altar where i meditate she put it on there and she's just like waiting for the spirits and she's like where are the spirits and so i'm kind of like perpetuating that they're coming uh-huh. <laughs> but now she was like waiting and then she saw some dirt on the wall and she's like is that the spirit and she wouldn't go to bed i mean she was also not wanting to take her nap but she was like waiting for it and then she wanted to bring the pouch into her bedroom and then i said maybe grandma hope will come touch you on the arm in your dream and then she's like where i don't want her touching my arm and then i was like why am i perpetuating this i don't know but how do you handle things like that i i think you, what you do is you wait till four in the morning and you get dressed up like a great <laughs> grandmother <laughs> and then you scare you wake her up by running in with a pot slamming a spoon on a pot <laughs> that is a fantastic idea i mean don't She'd you probably feel, like it don't you feel like gil like we've gone back and forth with this on this podcast about uh Santa's christmas and santa claus and mm-hmm. I feel like it's well. A, Gil is a kindred Jew with you. A, he doesn't. He doesn't have a Christmas tree. He's not right. one of those Jewish people who are like we celebrate everything. Right. So don't you feel like it's like a Jewish superpower to be like, like the conversation about whether or not to indoctrinate your child with like lies about a jolly spirit that steals into the house in the night and leaves toys and takes cookies. You don't even have to have that debate. But you think Ju- you think Judaism is better? <laughs> I don't know if it's better, <laughs> but around that particular thing, it's better. But. but uh, uh, no, no. What were you going to say, Natasha? I was going to just tell Moshe that, you know, the spirit of her dead grandmother is a little different than Santa Claus. I don't know that it is. Hmm. I don't, well, no. I mean, I, I have, a, I see, I have a problem because, like, we saw this, we went to the farmer's market the other day and we saw the 
the witch in the store. And at first she seemed, my daughter seemed interested in it. And then she's been complaining about it every single night. Like, is the witch going to come into the, into my room at night? And I'm like, well, there's no such thing as witches. There's no such thing as ghosts. But like part of me does believe in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> so part of me is like, well, you're going to fucking learn. You're going to learn one day. You, you, part of you is like, <laughs> you think that's a witch? Wait till you see a real fucking witch. It's coming and it's way more terrifying. I, exactly. I can't be like, she's like, what if someone comes into our house in the middle of the night? In the middle of the night and I'm like. No one's coming in. Meanwhile, in the back of my head, I'm like, someone can fucking come in. <laughs> and I can't, I can't do anything about it because I'm, a, I'm f- like four foot seven. Wait, first of all, <laughs> you're not four foot seven. You're at least five feet. Now, b- do you actually believe in ghosts, though? Is that for real? Um, I mean, I, I, I don't. I, it's not like I, I, I don't believe in. I don't believe in that stuff. But I, I. I don't have I'm I can't be too sure. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't want to be I don't want to act like I'm uh, like too arrogantly about it. Are there are there spirits in Judaism or there not? There definitely really? are. Yeah. Yes. Okay. There's there's weird D books and goblins and things. Did I ever tell and you angels? I've never told you this story, Natasha. Gil, you'll probably appreciate this. I was having a conversation once years ago. I was in Israel and I was talking to this Hasidic guy and like hippie Hasidic and he's like you know, we were kind of debating. I wasn't religious, and he all he did all day was study Talmud. And I was, we were like really debating. We were having this really long, very deep conversation about like why he believed what he believed, and I was why I believe what I believe. And we were really connecting on all these intellectual levels, and it went on for like, why are you making a, a, a stink face, Natasha? <laughs> Anytime I talk about Judaism, well, it just sounds like you're in a fight with someone. No, no, no. We were like really having, a, a, we were having a, a connection, like my Hasidic <laughs> brother, like screaming at each other, though, right? <laughs> a lot of gesticulation, a lot of hand yes. movements, and then we, we're we're like an hour into this conversation. I'm like, man, we really there's there's not so much difference between the two of us. And then he goes, you have to understand, in the time of the Talmud, there were people who could literally fly. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm done. This conversation, I have no connection to this person. Every bit of connection we built up leaked out. I was like, I can't. I just can't. Was, was he wearing like a fur coat at in 90 degree heat? <laughs> yeah. That would have that could have also tipped you off that something was off. <laughs> <laughs> um, what what is your relationship with t- with like magic and superstition and? Uh, fantasy with your kid do you tell her things are everything is pragmatic and real or do you sometimes let her believe in things like east like tooth fairies and things um i think i try to let her have a healthy sense of belief and suspense of you know disbelief um i try to also be you know pragmatic but i find superstition and magic to be completely like different like i'm a superstitious person i would say but i but i don't like that side of me but like the magic side of me, this sort of like wanting to believe in something bigger or or some some greater purpose or meaning, that I think is something that's useful. Does that mm. make sense? T- it totally makes sense. Yeah. I, and and the link that you're making about it, uh, the me- life having higher meaning than just pragmatic reality, linking that to like believing in Santa Claus, like is that are those similar? And like. I'm almost feeling like a hypocrite. Like if I want to teach my child that there's, you know, that there's a meaning outside of just waking up and doing your life, don't I also have to like say I don't know what the answer is about things like ghosts and magic and spirits? I don't know anything. And, and what he said, like a healthy sense of disbelief or, he- right. you know, like you want to teach your kids that anything is possible and that like, you know, there is synchronicity and great things do happen. And, you know, if you really put your mind, you know, like you want to teach them positive thinking naturally. Well, right. Because why not? Well, the one thing, Gil, I saw today, you sent a video over, or maybe it was your wife, of your child in their in their costume, and it was a, a magician pulling a rabbit out of its hat. That's and correct. I, yeah. And I don't want to I don't want to offend you at all, but to me, what I saw was you encouraging demonism, and encouraging you know, like that she believed. I mean, I know you didn't mean anything by it, but I think we should talk. No, I I want her to worship Satan. And oh, I, okay. I um I, no, I I truly want her to pull like some sort of. 
Uh, hopefully, she tricks us one day and pulls a knife out of the hat and then just stabs her parents. <laughs> or stabs so the I, witch that invaded her bedroom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I have no idea where the magician came from either. She has never seen, like, magic or anything or, or like, never uh, – it's not in any of her shows, but magician came out of nowhere. Hmm. Um and it's funny, you never see magicians dress like that anymore. Also, it's classic. Very I was like, old she's school. like a, a Vegas magician. <laughs> yeah, we were really. like, I sh- I'm like, shouldn't she be wearing like ripped jeans and like a black t shirt? <laughs> <laughs> like, if that, like, that's a real magician these days. <laughs> <laughs> All these Gen Zers are like, what's this costume? Why, why is this weird w- maitre d at a four star restaurant in the 40s uh, do- pulling a rabbit out of their hat? You should be at a fucking performing at a buffet. Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was very cute, and our child wanted to be a mermaid, and Moshe was really upset because he thought that was super basic. Well, and when the prop, the when prop, I showed him that your daughter was a magician, he was kind of jealous. I was, to be honest. I was like, now that's a costume. That's like quirky. It's not... Uh, that's it's pretty not, basic. It's pretty basic. It is, but there's some... like. She used to want to, for the first nine months of this year, she said she wanted to be a ghost, which is as basic as it gets. But I thought, that's a great throwback. You that's can a, work with yes. that. Yeah, now that I can work with. I thought, this is a throwback. It's old school. I it's- mean, they're not real, but uh, you can <laughs> certainly be a ghost. <laughs> no, no, no. There used to be ghosts, you know. Then they could literally fly. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we should uh, see if we can... Call, would, do, you, do you want to call someone with us? What if he says no? <laughs> I would love to. I mean, he knows we're going to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's call this fella. Oh, oh I'm excited about this. I like this location. Let's yeah. call Evan in Silver Lake. Oh, as a local boy. We should all get a drink after this. <laughs> Evan. Hey. Hi, Evan. Hi, Evan. Hello, hello. Hi, Gil. Hi, Nosh. Hi, Moshe. Hi, Natasha. Hi. Hi. I like that, actually. Nosha. That could be a no good. I, no, that could be a. Uh, that could save us probably forty-five minutes a year. <laughs> that's your. Oh, yeah. por- that's your uh, benefit, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We've been trying to launch that for a while now. Yeah, it's your spin. It's your spinoff of the uh, of, of OSHA as well. Of OSHA, the <laughs> Occupational Safety Hazard Association. Exactly. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like it's like the anti version of it, like the anti masking version of of OSHA. Right. Well, when I saw that you were in Silver Lake and just your whole visage, I thought, now this is an OSHA guy. This guy gets <laughs> occupational safety, and that's what we're probably talking about today, right? Non slip shoes are super important. People. <laughs> okay. Good. Uh, so what's going on, Evan? Yeah. So I called because I need some advice on how to set boundaries with my anti-mask, anti-COVID denying mother, Um, specifically around like her wanting to visit and get together for the holidays and things like that. And, you know, kind of me pushing up against all that stuff. And it's been, you know, a little bit tricky doing so when, uh, you know, luckily I'm I'm across the country from her now. So it makes it a little bit easier, but I still kind of get those texts every, every so often like, Oh, what are we going to do for Christmas and we're going to get together with your grandparents and all this stuff. And I kind of have to be like, ah, I, I'm busy. Let me talk to you later. So I'm kind of avoiding it now, but I need to find a way to actually, you know, actually deal with it. Hmm. I have a question and I want, yes. I want to hear, it's funny. We've had iterations of this call over the years, but it's gotten more acute now because of COVID. Like it used to be like my conservative relative, but now it's like, no, they might also be carrying d- disease. <laughs> 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 yeah, the- I mean, I mean, she's literally like, "Hey, let's get all your grandparents together and do this, like, celebrate his 80th birthday." And I was like, "The dude just had surgery like two weeks ago, and y'all are coming across the country, and this seems like, uh, well, I mean, this seems like example number one for what not to do." But is the idea that even if everyone's vaccinated, that you don't want to have like outdoor parties with people? Wait, who are, are they old? vaccinated? You've made so this is the whole. The whole problem is that my my mom and that side of the family they are like very anti-vax and not vaccinated and so it's kind of like bringing them into a like a an atmosphere like with myself and my grandparents that are out here where like we've kind of been safe and we're trying to like keep each other you know trying to stay on top of that and then you know she's kind of coming in almost like kicking in the door of that you know they're like the they're like this this one this one feels like an easy one for me this is like Tell your mom to go fuck herself, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, that's classic easy for you to say. That's right. It is easy for you. They're, they're like, I mean, I, yeah, like, why, not let that, why not let that side of your family perish? 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know. I know that's they're like that's the, the Beverly part. Hillbillies just like coming in, <laughs> tearing everything up. Could you guys do? Could, would you guys be able to do that? I feel like I would not. I don't know. I mean, I'm on the sort of like cautious, very cautious side, but I'd have to be like outdoors, fifty feet away. You know, with mm-hmm. a, I don't know. And, and if she was, you know, we we you know we had kind of brought that up, but you know, if it was something closer to that, then maybe I would, you know, it would be a lot easier. But she's kind of like, no, we're gonna like stay with you and eat out and like try and do all these different things where like where I tried to offer up some compromises and she was basically like, no, fuck you. You're part of the sheeple. Got it. Okay. So wait, Oh, I, I'm trying to figure out some of the specific details. So it mm-hmm. is becoming cute. It was before abstract, but now she's like, no, I'm coming. And instead of you saying, I actually am uncomfortable with this. You've sort of kicked the ball <laughs> down the road and, and yeah, exactly, never answered. Exactly. Got we it. should wait. We should wait till you have till you're like intubated to say something. I think <laughs> <laughs> you know, with a note, a note like a dry erase board. I'm actually yes. uncomfortable with your COVID protocols. <laughs> exactly. Put a post-it note on your gravestone. Yeah. <laughs> but also, you know, these people are 80 and they're like, they're like thinking about their wrist. They're like, I'm going to die soon anyway. I want to see my family. I want to have fun. I mean, I don't know why they don't want to get vaccinated, but you know, you got to kind of love people. They, like, you know, I, if, if I was 80, I'd probably no, want to. The 80 year old is, I, I, just to clarify, the 80 year old in this scenario is vaccinated? Correct. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. You're your your mother is is the wild one correct yeah yeah and my grandparents and they're kind of like at high risk and so your mom is at sturgis your grandparents (laughs) are reading the economist yeah exactly and you know of course when like other people tell me stuff like this i'm just like oh yeah fuck them like you don't need to talk to them anymore but there's like a lot of my family that's kind of like estranged and so it is a relationship that i'm interested in keeping and so it's kind of like I'm willing to compromise, like not compromise, but I'm willing to be like, no, let's like, we can still get together on Zoom and we can like have it, make, have it a whole fun thing and trying to offer up other options. And she's very kind of against all of that. So it's kind of like, how do I set up, set up like effective boundaries while still trying to maintain a relationship? Cause it's usually in my, in my head, the first thing is just either ignore it or fuck you. And I feel like those are two fun options. I mean, I mean, usually, usually like, ant- like anti-vax, you know, people are, are sort of, they're, they're tied to the sort of freedom aspect of it, of like, no one's going to tell me what to do. I want to make my own choices. And to me, that's the side of that you can appeal to your mom to, which is like, this is, this is important to me. This is what I believe. And, you know, I don't want you anywhere fucking near me, you know? Um, uh, yeah, you're know. right, Gil. It'll it'll appeal to that side of her and she'll be like, I got it. No problem at all. No, but it sounds like this is a deeper issue because like, have you, this is kind of a divide with you and your mom now. And yeah, yeah exactly. It's, and it's bizarre because we went from, you know, March, 2020, she, you know, made me a handmade mask and sent it in the mail. And now we're at like, you know, anti-mask Got theory. It. And so it was, it was like a really sharp transition. She's been from, radicalized. Yeah, exactly. So like last, so like last Christmas, I was still like living her and I kept comfortable, like, and he was giving reasons why I wasn't going to be coming down to visit. And basically she was like, oh, so then we're just going to come up and see you. And I was like, oh, I don't really want that. And they showed up on my doorstep, like Whoa. basically like, Whoa. no, 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 this is happening. Aggressive. So, so luckily we have like divide of like the whole country, but it's still like, you know, trying to, uh, you know, w- w- what's like, there's like, it's kind of, you know, she's not willing to kind of see it on my terms. So it's kind of like what, you know, how do you move forward when it's like, you know, you have like a mom, like kind of guilting you into like coming, you know, not spending time with you. And it's, you know, not about that at all. I'm trying to figure out like, what's the, like the delicate balance of, uh, of, of doing Got that. It. It's just tricky. All right. I have some thoughts. I think that mm-hmm. one thing you need to do <clears throat> is suss out um, how much of this, your protocols are about actual safety and how much of it is about wanting to punish your mom for being unreasonable because that I would be tempted to be like oh you're not going to see me because you're a fucking nutcase and you said that you wanted to save your relationship with her like I think that Gil's first point of saying fuck that is a is an okay choice to make if that's how you feel but that's not how you feel you want you want to keep this relationship so yeah exactly so once you kind of make a grid of like what am i actually comfortable with because you're vaccinated your grandparents are vaccinated Mm -hmm. the truth is you're probably safe safer 
You're not going to die. Your grandparents yeah, yeah, got, might, go, might take that but cola. But they're going to die anyway. Maybe they want to see their friends. They felt isolated. What, what about them? Your grandparents are in that Colin Powell risk, you know, where they're, uh, where they're humanitarian um, human rights violators that lied to the country and started a war in the Middle East that was not justified. That's your grandparents all over, right? I mean, exactly. the great generation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what, what do they feel? Do they want to see your, your mom? The silent generation. I know they're, they're, they're in the same boat where they're like, they're trying to negotiate with her and it kind of just keeps, you know, okay. they it's it back against the wall. So it's like, almost at this point, it's kind of like, cause it's very hard to me for kind of like, like I know what I want, but it's hard just like asking for like, kind of like putting my foot down, Well, here, you know, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like, yeah, it's, I kind of have it in my mind what's made up, but it's almost like, how do I, that's like, that. See, that's the thing. Moshe, if he, if it feels like if he wanted to see his mother, I, then I would I, then I would say, OK, you got to think of it, b- about it from her perspective. But to mm. me, it feels like he is a little too scared to set boundaries with his mom and to say, like, you can't come. I'm sorry, but if you're not vaccinated, this is not OK with me. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, I think it's it's more about sort of, you know, making sure that she understands that you are, you're going to get what you want as well. And what you want is to be safe and for your grandparents to be safe. And I think Mm -hmm. making that clear with her, it doesn't seem, it doesn't seem like she's respecting your boundaries at this point. If she's showing up to your house and being like, boo, I have fucking COVID, you know, like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, I don't know. know. Are are we supposed to not allow anyone like, is it, is there a world where the unvaccinated person comes and, t- you know, just you, they, they rent a place and then you guys just meet outside? You yeah. live in California. Exactly. There's a middle ground between fuck you, never come here again, and I will allow you to stomp all over me and you, your decision is what counts. Like, what about you? Like, you were like, she can't I see from my perspective, but that's a beauty of boundaries. They don't need yeah. to see from your perspective because you go, it's not about convincing them that you're right. It's about telling them what you will and won't accept. So what about the idea of you guys all meeting, like you all could meet at a hotel and then you all meet in the common area of the hotel and you can gather as a family, you can have meals outside and they can sit, you, you got to find a hotel with a very long table. Okay, no, but she just needs to like understand your boundaries, you know, mm-hmm. and, and your boundaries can be that you see her. We just like see each other outside. If you want to come inside, then, you know, maybe you can figure out something where you guys are staying at separate places and you take a test. But, you know, there's certainly ways to see people, especially, I mean, testing, especially if you don't want them to get. I I totally agree. I think it's way more nuanced than just don't come or come. I think like you have a lot more options and find a way where you can both be happy. I think (laughs) also, Evan, the easy part of, uh, of, you haven't even done the easy part. It seems like that's the hardest part, which is declaring your boundaries, but that's actually the easy part in boundaries. Mm-hmm. The easy part is saying, I will not accept this. The hard part is when your mother, your mother, the person who raised you, immediately will disrespect your bound. I mean, there's no question about it. When you declare your boundaries, she's not going to be like, I respect that. She'll be like, I, I couldn't respect that less, Evan. You've turned into a little bitch boy. We all, uh, like, there's no way this doesn't turn into a huge fight. The hard part is just standing your ground and going, I hear everything you're saying. If you want to insult me, then my boundaries are going to get harsher because then it's going to be, a, I'm not going to see you at all. Uh, the, so that was, was what I would say declare your boundaries and then stick to your boundaries. And you've got a natural ally in your intelligent, uh, intellectual grandparents. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. What is it? What is it? The, uh, the famous saying, saying that your parents are the one that push your buttons the most. Cause they, there's one that sewed it on themselves. Totally. Like that. And the truth is that means that you have a small anti-mask or anti-vaxxer inside of your body right now, <laughs> trying to fight its way out. So it sounds like the best thing to do is uh, go on a cruise ship, right? That seems like the best one. Well, n- n- oh, that's, you make a joke, but I actually think there is some logic to saying, I will meet you at a hotel with mm-hmm. gra- grandma and grandpa getting their own room. I get my own room. You get your own room and we hang out in, in the foyer. And that's the way, that's what I'm comfortable with. That's true. And, and if the hotel happens to be on the water, then that's fine too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, it is okay to be near water. And the added bonus is your your mom is probably going to get pretty drunk and she could go for a long swim and then you won't have to worry about this anymore. Exactly, yeah. Long, long, long walks down. <laughs> Wait, I have, I have one quick question though. How, what, what do you think inspired her from going from like knitting you a mask to like not wanting to get vaccinated? 
it my, see my guess is that she was kind of always on the like alternative medicine like side of Facebook and I think that that went from like oh try this supplement to all of a sudden like <laughs> the, the government is trying to kill you I will tell you what I think is not possible is you telling your mother enough good information about vaccines that you change her mind. Her mind, yes. it will never yeah, be yeah. changed. It will never happen. For the rest of time, you should accept <laughs> that she is this person now. So then you have to negotiate with that person. Don't negotiate with the person that you think you can convince her to be because she ain't that person. Especially over the holidays. <laughs> Especially over the holidays, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, good luck, Evan. Well, thank you so, thank you so much. I know it seems like... Like you said, the, the easiest part comes first and the hardest part is. Gonna, are, so know, what are you going to do it? Are you going to have this conversation? Yeah, I know. I have to, you know, I've been, you know, avoiding her calls and things like that. So now it's actually, you know, oh, so this is what it is. Like, this is the plan. You know what I mean? I'll tell you. I'll tell you what you do. Here's a real easy thing to do. Text your mom right now and say, hey, can we talk on whatever date? I need to talk to you about us getting together so that you've committed yourself to this conversation because it's easy to not have, but eventually they're going to show up at your door and be like, hey, it's us and we wanted to do a deep breathing party and you're going to have to decide whether you're... <laughs> I would also, that. just to add on to that, I would send also like a devil emoji just to fuck with her just a little bit, mm -hmm. just to, you know, mm -hmm. so she doesn't know. Keep her on her toes. Natasha, parting words? Well, I was just realizing that my mom hasn't come to see us in like almost two years of COVID and, and I think and she's vaccinated <laughs> <laughs> because of, you know, not wanting to leave and travel and being afraid of, and health issues, health issues, but you know, and then, but not wanting, you know, not seeing people. And I think this is just a weird time and it's very hard for everyone to navigate. You know, this is like, it's not like anyone knows what, what to do right now. Oh, but so. you're kind of saying like having an unvaccinated uh, anti-vax mom, there's some, advantages her mom's too yeah. scared to leave the state your mom's like fuck it i'm jumping on the harley i'll be there in 22 hours <laughs> yeah i mean it's like just work with it your yours sounds a little more fun yeah 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 exactly yes yeah. so it's you know it's it's kind of like being okay with like agree to disagree that type of thing it, it which is which is kind of which is hard that is hard especially with these kinds of topics but they you know if it's your mom like i said you decided you wanted to have a relationship with her so ergo this is the person that you're having a relationship with yes the more complicated route but hopefully you know the one that's more fulfilling i guess is kind of like the the long run yeah all right and the more time your mom spends with you the last time she's on facebook honing down that uh that is true Going down those those rabbit holes. I bet my mom must be on like some sort of liberal, like extra scared boomer track. <laughs> like there's the information that's being fed is like they're so cautious Wait. that they don't want to leave. No, I've got an idea. No, I just had an idea before we say goodbye. You, here's what you do. You find a way to get some Johnson and Johnson black market. OK, just the one shot. Right. Invite your mom to come. What, you know, put like a little weird filters in your nose so that you're safe or, or keep them away from your grandparents because you're vaccinated. Get the booster. Okay, this is the plan. Get the booster now. Invite her to come right after the booster really kicks in so your antibodies are through the roof. Say, you know what, mom? Come through. Sleep in my house. Okay, you're doing good because you got that booster. Mom goes to bed. Get her drunk, real drunk, right? When mom goes to bed, you sneak into that bedroom. You just just give her the Johnson and Johnson and she can come hang out and you get your mom and she's vaccinated. You saved her life. I think this is a really good plan. I love it. It's vigilante shit. Yes. And, but don't tell OSHA cause it's not approved. Exactly. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thank you so much guys. Bye. Bye. God, that will be hard. What? Just to have somebody, I don't have anybody in my family who like just fundamentally sees the world in a diametrically opposed well, way Well, that's what me. this was about. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, like, you have this, you know, sort of stressor in your life, like where you disagree with, with people who, I feel like there's just a divide. Yeah, but it just sucks if it's your mom, like, yeah. and they just don't see the world in the same way, and there's no hope of changing that. There's no hope. I mean, it's like, it, it seems impossible to change... I don't know. It, it, they've just been worked on for so long through social media and their friends. It's just like Im impossible to do over a holiday. Like, hey. Well, if you got offline, it, maybe you could. The, yes. The, the real problem with that particular strain of dubiousness is that they see the argument you're making why they're wrong as evidence that they're right. So there is no way to win the argument.
Like the fact that you're so incensed is like, see, they even got, look, the brainwashing even got to my little boy, you know, like they, it's, there's no winning. The only way to win an argument with an anti-vaxxer is uh, w- what you said when they're intubated, they'll be like, okay, <laughs> you were right. My bad. <laughs> It's true. Then they go like, the vaccine maybe was a good idea. <laughs> Sir, you're intubated. You're supposed to be passed out. Stop waking up. Um, sh- shall we do one more? Yeah, let's do it. Ooh. Oh, wait, Gil, can, do you want to do one more? Yes. Sure, yes. I would love to. Okay. You want to call Gabby in Bakersfield? Hell yeah. See, people in California, they have no excuse. You just like go outside. Oh, right. Everything we do is outside. Right. Our kid does soccer outside. You know, they go to school. They're outside a lot. That's what I think you say to you an see anti- your family outside. That's what I think you say to an anti-vax parent. Oh, we see you, Gabby, and just know that we're <laughs> almost done with our conversation over here. But yeah, and okay. <laughs> it's pretty rude what we're doing. You are our guest, but we're just in the middle of a thought. So in a way, it's rude what you're doing as well. Um, <laughs> I could leave. I could totally. No, leave. you I'll stay. Just stay and hear the hear the nuggets of wisdom that you're, are about to come your way. But the thing with, is with with an with an anti-vax parent is you you have to know that they you have to just say some version of I know you think I'm crazy and I don't care and that's very difficult to do. Anyway, Gabby, what's up? Hi, how are you guys? We're good. Oh, it's it's Gil Ozeri, uh, Moshe Kasher, and me, who you called uh, Natasha Legero. Yeah. I just saw you guys at, uh, what was it, Supernova this last weekend. You guys were amazing. Thank I'm you. I'm really huge fan of. You came the all the way from Bakersfield podcast. to go to the Supernova outdoor comedy show in Los Angeles? Well, so I'm technically, I'm from Bakersfield, but uh, I'm technically in Orange of oh, Orange County. <laughs> Whoa, that is, that is, so you got some lies going on. That's cool. No, you told well, our producer okay, a lie. So Bakersfield is an important part of the story because in as you know, it's the armpit of California. So yeah, well, it's also the <laughs> home of uh, the some of the best country music. We were just listening to some Bakersfield country today. Do you know about this, the Bakersfield sound? Mm-hmm. Yes, unfortunately, I do know about this a little <laughs> too much. <laughs> okay, okay, what's happening? Let tell us, talk to us. Okay, so I my best friend went through a breakup last year with uh, a guy she was seeing for like three years, but for the past year of them being broken up, she's in this like cycle of not necessarily getting back together with him, but like hearing him out about like what he wants to do for her and what, like the promises that he's making to her to I'll be a better man. And I'll, you know, uh, essentially be emotionally available because he's not emotionally available. And she keeps hearing him out and going through this, hooking up with him, being disappointed that he can't change within like a month. She, she does it about once a month. And then she comes to me and talks to me about it because I'm her support system. And it's really difficult being a good friend who doesn't, I hate the guy. Like, I just don't like him. He is the worst. He doesn't, he never wants to leave Bakersfield. That's kind of why Bakersfield is an important part. Cause it's like, she wants to leave and he doesn't even want to travel outside of like California. Like he doesn't care. Like he's just awful. Uh, her dad died and she, he was like uncomfortable during like her going through that process of like losing her dad and stuff. So he's just a bad guy. And I don't necessarily think that he's the best fit for her, but she is on the cycle of getting back together with him. And I want to be a good friend who like is there for her, but also I'm so sick of hearing about him. I'm not gonna lie, especially because he's the worst. So what, what's your question? My question is, do you guys have any advice for like talking with her about it? Either like, you know, telling her, I like don't come to me with this I guess or is it more like suck it up and how do I suck it up like if I don't if I'm not the biggest fan of him I would ask her like what what do you want from life like what do you where do you see yourself in like five years what do you where do you see yourself in three years and like do you think so and so is going to help you get there you know is do you envision that because if you do then I want to help you, but like, I don't know, like, you know, if she could kind of get a little more clear with what she wants. Um, and I mean, you have your own life too. Yeah. Yeah. You got that at those Xbox 360 headphones to get back to you play Halo or what's your, <laughs> these are my boyfriends. These are my boyfriend's headphones. <laughs> he plays a lot of stuff. 
Um, Gil, what do you think? I, it seems like there's two issues. One is like you're you're uh, you don't want your friend to be with this guy, and the other one is that you don't want to hear about this anymore, right? Um, yeah. And those are to me those are kind of separate. Like you can always say to your friend, like, "Hey, I don't," you know, I, I, I like I don't think you can. You can always say to your friend, like, I don't want to hear this kind of, I don't want to hear about this. This is making me upset, but I feel like you're going to lose your friend's trust in that yeah. situation. And I, it, it seems like, you know, your friend is going to do what they want to do and be with who you want to be with. And I think yeah. like at times, you know, with friends, we sort of have to like, ugh, we have to deal with a lot of their bullshit, you know, because mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's like sort of asking your friend to like, you know, get rid of a tattoo or something of like, of, you know, of a like Bakersfield a tattoo, a Bakersfield <laughs> tattoo of like, or, yes, exactly. Um, with a Tasmanian devil, you know, like on the twin towers, like a, the terrible tattoo. The twin towers it's of like, Bakersfield. Oh, uh, Bakersfield. It's like, it's ugly, but like, it's not going to change and it's none of your business and it's shitty to ask. Like, yeah. I, 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 I just feel like, you know, it's, it's, it's a hard ask because you don't know all, all the detail. I don't know. There's yeah. a lot. That's I how I know. honestly feel about it. Like I'm never going to, I don't feel like I could tell her, but when I talk to other people about it, they're like, uh, you know, like it's enabling, like you're just letting her go on the cycle and like, not like, I want to tell her my true feelings in a way, but also I just, I know that breakups take time to get over someone and maybe she might get back together with him. I would hate that honestly, but I don't know. I've been giving so many generic answers that now we're that we're long distance best friends and I call her more often. It's so hard to have a phone call where it's like, so I'm disappointed again with him. Like it's always the same conversation. Okay. And what are you getting from your relationship with her? Um, oh, she's my best friend. I, I enjoy it. We do a lot of things together. Like we're, we go on trips together and she's a great person. She's funny. We laugh so much together. You go to Zelda's kingdom. You'll fight off yeah. um, you'll, you'll <laughs> Master Chief in Halo. You wait. I, okay, I okay. You, you said at the end. I like sometimes when people talk enough, they they tell on themselves. So I, I could because in the beginning you were saying like you don't want. I really relate to. By the way, this situation. I've been in this. I think everybody's been in this situation where you have a friend that's in an endless breakup, and in the beginning you're there for them as a friend because it seems like they're processing. And as a person that is in the breakup, if in the beginning, it's processing your emotional um, uh, 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 feedback or, or, or damage from the relationship, and then it becomes about it becomes addictive. It becomes like picking at a scab, it, and it and it's very difficult to stop doing it because it, you you're you're doing this pro emotional uh, regurgitation and processing in the name of healing, but you're not healing. You're actually making it constantly fresh and painful, and you never stop this endless cycle of breaking up and longing for the person and as a friend of a person like that it's like it's like they're just coming to your spinal cord and putting a tap in and just putting a mug there and just taking your life force because it's just like it's the same conversation and you've never had a different answer but it's just like you have to like field their emotional vomit because in the name of being a good friend right well that, uh, how long has this been going on gabby uh it's been going on for a little over a year and she does it every month or every two months right. or so, every other month. So, but then at the end you told on yourself, which is that you're giving her generic answers and you're not really telling her how you fully feel about this person in this relationship. Is that right? After like the third time, like, especially now, I don't know what else, like everything that has been said has like how or has already been said about how much I dislike him right. and how, she, how much better she is because uh, I have talked to her about her plan, Natasha. That's like one of the main ways I've tried to like get her out of this situation is being like, you want to be a professor. You want to move to the East coast. Like you have these, like I literally had a, what's your five year goal, 10 year goal. Like, what do you want from life? And what does he have to offer that, you know, lines up with that? Cause that's what I look for in a partner. And I thought it'd be good. But after, 12 times of her you know oh he's never changing he doesn't i i'm like sorry girl boss like <laughs> i don't know what to say anymore that's not the, something i've already told her which is like you're great you'll find someone else like you just need to you know get out there and oh have you tried dating apps like all those talks have been had and it feels i feel bad for 
ending up in this, I'm in the cycle now of saying the same thing because it's not, it's not like I'm actually going to change her mind and I just want to be there for her still. Tosh, any thoughts? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just start to, I would, if, if someone was annoying me as a friend, I don't really have like a best friend, like the only person I talk to. So if someone was like on this path and like kind of annoying in that way, I would probably like see them a little less, but I'm kind of savage. Yeah, she's a savage. She's an emotional <laughs> monster and she's willing to cut people off, including people very, very close to her at the like the drop of a hat. Like it you know, like No, I'm just saying. See, this, no. this, this, yeah, this seems similar to me that to the previous call. I agree. It's like you know, it's it it it's sort of like I, I don't think it's okay for someone to just constantly lay their anxiety and their like shit upon another friend. Like that doesn't feel like a good friend either. But at the same time, I think that everyone's going to sort of she's going to learn in her own time. And you cannot convince her that this guy is not right for her if she doesn't feel that way. She's got to come to that. And unfortunately, it feels like that's she's good. It's taking a long time. Yeah. You, know? you so, could start I mean, trolling her when like what she calls. You could be like, I think you should get back together with him. Like, he seems awesome. Oh my God. <laughs> and then she'll be like, wait a minute. What's going on? I don't feel like you're trying because she Gil's right. She's calling in not to get advice. She's not calling to get advice anymore. She's calling to purge. She's calling because she knows that you'll always pick up and put those dorky headphones on, and she can just she can just <laughs> purge at your at your feet, and you'll just accept the vomit pile. And go like, yeah. cool. I mean, I don't think there's. I don't. I think that at a certain point, be you know, friendships are supposed to be mutual. Now, I don't think you should get rid of her as a friend, but this part of your friendship they're supposed to be mutually beneficial and it sounds like this is a one-way street she's just sucking from you and you're not get it's not pleasant for you and she just it's, i'm not saying she's being mean she doesn't know who else to turn to you're the only person yeah. she's got that she can bring this to but i would say it might be time for a little bit of tough love which is hey you know how i feel about this guy i don't like him i love you i'll be here for you no matter what happens but I can't process this relationship with you anymore because there's only one answer I've got. Break up with him. Never see him again. <laughs> and and then she'll just know. Like, I'm not the... I, I, unfortunately, I'm not the person. Now, if you want me to help you move on, if you want me to... To, to help you break up with him and make strategies for that, I'm here for that all day. If you want me to hear again that he disappointed you, but tell you it's okay, girl, I'm not. I'm not here for. I, I didn't come here for that, and I'm not down. If you want to play Call of Duty, I'm here for that. <laughs> I'm here for that. I'm always <laughs> online. I never log off. Uh, I, see, it's funny because I. I mean, not to say I would take Natasha's advice, but like I can't kind of because we made plans. You know, post COVID world opening up, we were like we're traveling together, so in like a month i'm going to new orleans with her and then we're going to europe we have like tickets bought i think this is a perfect time perfect time for you to set some boundaries it is like the last yeah. call the last call was about somebody whose parents did, were anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers and he didn't know what to do because they were wanted to come see him it's the same thing it's about boundaries it's like you just set okay. your boundaries don't make if you don't say something before you leave on this trip the whole trip you're gonna be talking about this fucking doofus in bakersfield yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Dude, he's like, he's 24 and balding. Like, that's what I tell her every time she, like, and I can't tell her how many times, like, hey, she, she's balding. ruminating. Like, how much does he have to offer? Whoa, whoa, hey, wait whoa, a minute. Whoa, whoa. Now, wait a now, second. Now, wait a second. Okay. Listen, it's okay if you're 30 and balding. Now I'm on the, now I'm on the guy's side. I don't know this guy. <laughs> He can't help. Wait a minute. That's not a marker. How is that his fault? That's not a marker of a bad guy. He's just a guy who's who's well, okay. it's on top testosterone of dipped. Yeah, it's on right. Top of everything else. And to like, make matters worse, he's balding. Yeah. I'm with you. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, yeah, the problem I think, is, is there's nothing on top of everything else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I think you got to say before you go, oh, you know, you're my best friend and I love you. I don't want to talk about that guy during our trip. And that'll be a signal to her if you make it specific about the trip. So it's not about don't ever come to me with that again. If you make it specifically about the trip, unless she's dumb, she'll take a hint. <laughs> she'll take a hint and go, oh, she yeah. means in general. I think it's important to say, though, what you said, Moshe, which is I love you and I'm here for you. Like, make sure she knows that it's not like necessarily it. This is also about taking care of yourself. Yeah. You know, it's not about you, you still love her and you'll be there for her. Wow. That's great advice. You guys. Wow. OK, anyway, good. Right people. Heck yeah. Home run derby over here. 
And also, if I could give you one last piece of advice, <laughs> av- avoid the avoid the COVID nineteen uh, t- um, v- experimental vaccine. It's just uh, it's a, it's it's unproven technology, and masks don't work. You're breathing in your own CO two. Anyway, that's all. That's all I want to say. <laughs> all right. Well, good luck, Gabby. She's like, I totally agree. I love agree. you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Bye. Mosh, there's an alarm going off upstairs. What do you mean there's an alarm going off? Can I just go look? What do you mean there's an there's alarm? There's like a beep going off. It's, it's probably a ghost or something, some sort of witch. Are you doing any Halloween stuff, Gil? Any activities? We might go um, like sort of trick-or-treating. Our neighborhood is insane. I don't know if you know that. Oh, oh is it that's really? amazing. There's like thousands of people here. There's people like selling shit in the street. Oh, um, no shit. Cool. And so, but if we sort of like go off like, a few blocks off, we can probably get away with it. Um, That's cute. Feel I have to yet. say, like, a child in a crowded space at night is stressful. <laughs> you know, like, mm-hmm. I, I want to, like, yeah, I don't know. It seems it seems stressful. Oh, it was like, oh. like, the last time we went there before COVID, it was like a frat party. <laughs> right. That is sketchy. And everybody's in costume. Do you remember it, there was a, a thing in the beginning of the pandemic where people were saying, child predators really liked masks it was that it was it was good for them to like kidnap kids and it didn't really make do you remember anybody remember reading this it was like part of the rhetoric of the anti-mask world was like oh and to make matters worse you know who loves masks is child (laughs) predators it was like i don't quite understand why but it was like it's easier to kidnap a kid if he's wearing a mask i guess anyway well that, that was really fun that was really fun. Thank you for asking me. Yeah, well, thanks for doing it. Are you doing anything you want to um, promote at this point in your life? Um, I may be on an upcoming episode of Curb, so you can watch that. Cool. Be- Wait, you are or you may be? He- I may be. I'm not allowed to say. Yes, oh, I, I, see. I am. Oh, I, no, I, see. I am. I am on an upcoming <laughs> I thought, episode. I would have thought that was an amazing <laughs> thing to plug. It's like, I had a very good audition, good audition. for Curb <laughs> recently, so that might be coming down the pike. <laughs> I have a producer session for a <laughs> shitty CBS show. I did a stand-up show once and a comedian came up and their credit was she has a callback for Blackish <laughs> next week. <laughs> I, like, I don't think you're supposed to I have a that. draft in my tweets I'd like to promote. <laughs> uh, okay, well, thanks, Gail. Hope to Thank see you, you soon. Gail, right, you were awesome. You, you look great. I love you. miss you I and miss love you, you too. I love you. All right, okay. I'm getting back to the ship. Bye. I love Gail. I love Gil as well. A I'm sweet excited man. that he's going to be on Curb Your Enthusiasm. I love that show. Yeah, I've always loved it. Okay. I mean, I just mean it's like been it's, it's such a good it's such a good. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like to me that when I when I that's when I first started realizing like comedy was could be really great. Kind of yeah. From Curb, like early episodes, like when I moved to LA and started doing comedy, I just oh. was like really kind of taken by that like his persona and like you know Let's get those producers on the line get you in that get you in the door there you know what i'll see what i can I'm do i'm just saying i like it i like it too i mean i don't like it as much as my idea for a uh my that i you said pixar movie i think that that's <laughs> actually that's got legs i honestly think it could be cool it's about a young white boy going to a day of the dead ceremony and finally realizing his true self it's about me it's called Mo Show. Cute. I think so too. Moco. 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 Moco Loco. It's about the dish, the Moco Loco in Hawaii. You know what that is? I don't really understand what it is either. Hawaiian food does mystify me. But you know what doesn't mystify me, Natasha? What? My love for you. Um, my love for you too. Mm, goodbye. <laughs>